Welcome back to News Geelong as we reach the end of sport tonight. And what better way to talk about local cricket with our man in the know, Graham Rollins. We've got matching shirts on tonight, Rollo, and let's kick it off with Division 1 and uh, a few pretty big games in Division 1 as we head into Round 5 and the Christmas break draws closer. First game tonight, Geelong City and Grovedale. Probably the battle of the bowling attacks and Geelong City got their first win uh, in surprise circumstances last week against Geelong West, the grand finalists from last year. Yeah, and uh, congratulations to uh, the Geelong City Sharks. A, a job well done. And uh, they'd be very, very pleased with that effort. Um, and also Grovedale, you mentioned the bowling attacks. Gareth Allen last week taking eight for 61. Great performance. And uh, it is, is a bowling attack balance. But I think uh, the, the, the City Sharks on Richmond Crescent they're going to trouble Grovedale, and the, the Grovedale batsmen have to be very, very wary of, uh, particularly early in the innings, if uh, they bat first. Uh, the wicket uh, Alan Pung presents out there, at, um, uh, sorry, the, 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 the presented down at Richmond Crescent is always a very, very good track, and I would expect that the uh, City Sharks will be very confident after their uh, win last week, but I think Grovedale have got the depth in their batting to overcome the Geelong City Sharks in a reasonably good game. One man just we can touch on with Geelong City, Richie Oliver, um, New English import, two, double uh, two centuries in his last two matches. So um, a great start to the Geelong Cricket Association uh, campaign for him. And from all reports, he uh, could be a premier cricketer if he wanted to, but he's uh, decided to stick it out there at Geelong City. The next game is uh, South Bowen and Geelong West, two powerhouses of the competition, no doubt. And, um, in this match, probably a battle of the batting, batting attacks and um, South Barn, as we know, Clinton Peake uh, could be the man to break a record, as, as you touched on. Yes, uh, Clinton Peake currently made 430 runs so far this season and uh, could become the first man since uh, Gary Kelson out there at Grovedale a number of years ago, made 500 runs before the uh, mid-season break and with uh, only 70 runs to get. Um, in the two games remaining and peak in the form that he is, he's well on his way. But, uh, as we said, uh, Geelong West, they're, of course, a very, very strong team. They've got good balance in their side. Um, their bowling attack is, uh, is well established. But, again, I think the home ground advantage of South Bowen down there on the common and the combination of the experience that they've got in their bowling attacks with uh, Phil Helbish and uh, Brad, Brad Hornstein uh, will hold the uh, the South Bowen boys steady and I think that they'll take the points over Geelong West in a very, very first class game. This is game of the round for mine and I'm going to tip Geelong West. I think uh, they would have had a pretty long hard look at themselves last week. Liam Buchanan um, got a second ball duck and I don't think that's going to happen again. Well, we yes, from, from past memories of Liam, we always expected big things from Liam each time he went to the wicket because you didn't know which way that explosive bat of his was going to work. But I tell you what, if he gets going early uh, down at South Bowen, they'll be making defence with ease. So, uh, yeah, look out South Bowen if Liam Buchan gets on the punch. Next game, North Geelong St Joseph's. We spoke to Brad Scown earlier in the show and um, he's been integral to North Geelong's start to the season and uh, with the ball. And they've also had a pretty handy batting start to the year and uh, face a Joey side in third position. North Geelong on top of the ladder. So this uh, has all the makings of a, of a great clash at uh, Osborne Park. Yeah, a new coach, we heard from Brad Scown, a new culture out at North Geelong this year, led by Andrew Ferguson. Uh, they were gone for all money last week against Leopold. Brad Scown, uh, once they didn't even think he'd get a bat, but uh, finished up batting and making 47, leading uh, the North Geelong Magpies to a win. And it'll be a tremendous batting uh, performance between this, the, these two uh, sides out at uh, Osborne Park. Uh, Brad Scown's taken 14 wickets so far this year. Um, St Joseph Daniel Fanning, he's the leading all-rounder in the competition at the moment, uh, taking 10 wickets and making 212 runs and uh, being in very good form, Daniel Fanning, and a really good battle. I just maybe think uh, North Geelong's youthful exuberance, Anthony Armistead up at the top of the list, Alan, uh, and Andrew Ferguson, they're batting very well. I just think that may give them the edge, but you've got the uh, bowling combination of uh, Wallerys, Morgan and Fanning to overcome. So as you said, it's going to be a bottler of a game out there at North Geelong at St Joseph's. If I'm twisting the arm to make a selection, I'm going to tip North Geelong. I'm going to tip St Joseph's, my former side, and 
Uh, I think Troy Nolan's in the runs at the moment, so hopefully he can continue his red-hot form. Uh, another pretty big match, 5v6, Lara take on Newton and Chuel, and Newton and Chuel have just been plugging along. They got very close last week to getting the runs, and um, their batting line looks pretty steady at this stage of the season. Yeah, Newtown and Chu will be pleased with uh, their performance last week, uh, nine or last round, nine for 297, uh, and then to get beaten by South Bowen, who finished up eight for 331. So uh, they're, they're in good batting form. And uh, Lara with uh, Matty Richmond, uh, probably the best of their bowlers. He's taken 16 wickets so far this season. It'll be a good battle out at Lara on the legend uh, Cooch Grass out there. Both the wicket and the outfield will be very, very quick. I no doubt, uh, no doubt the Checker Hughes has really put a lot of work into that ground this week. Uh, but I, I would think that Brian Thomas, the uh, the coach of the, the two Blues at Newtown and Chewell, has done a lot of work with his boys this week. A lot of confidence. They're starting to settle in well. The two Blues for mine. The other two games to touch on in GCA 1 starting tomorrow. Belpost Hill take on Leopold. Belpost Hill have had a pretty indifferent start to the year and will be hoping to get on the board and uh, move up from the bottom of the table. And then the other match, Heighton and East Bowen. East Bowen, easy winners there for mine. We'll move along to GCA 2. Quickly in the top of the table clash, St. Peter's and Manifold Heights. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, Manifold Heights just look to be uh, plugging along nicely. They got close to an outright win last week against Mottawari and um, yeah, look to be uh, taking shape in uh, GCA 2 after being dumped last year from the top flight. Yeah, uh, St. Peter's uh, and Mano, as you said, the top two sides. St. Peter's doing it comfortably, doing it well confidence, uh, both batting and bowling. Division 2 very well structured at the present time. You've got four sides uh, on 18 points, you've got five sides on 12 points, and then you've got one side on 10 points. So it's a very close competition. But in that match of the day, St Peter's on their home ground, I think will be just too strong for Mano. The other big match for me is Newcomen District take on Torquay. Newcomen District got uh, the first win of the season last year with an outright over Warm Ponds, and we're hoping to take that into to this weekend. The other games, in uh, just to move on to the GCA 3, Shelford and Winchelsea, and uh, in bar BPCA, Bowen Heads take on Drysdale in the 3v4 clash. And a quick mention of the Premier Cricket, as we spoke to Damien Shanahan earlier in the show, the big bat, big bush bash around uh, Premier Cricket this weekend. So that should be good to get around to the regional areas, right? Yes, the, uh, the 2020, uh, as you say, the bush bash, Great uh, for country centres around uh, Victoria and uh, Geelong. Well, they're in there with a real show and we wish them all the very, very best to get another win on the board at this time of the season. Thanks for that, Roy. That's all we have time for in cricket. We'll now move on to the weather. Looking at the weather for Geelong and the Surf Coast over the next six days. Tomorrow, Saturday, will be partly cloudy with light winds and a top temperature of a warm 28. Starting the new week, Sunday will also be partly cloudy with a top of 28, keeping it nice and warm. Don't forget that UV alert, the slip flop slap in these high temperatures. Monday will be cloudy with isolated showers and a top of 20. Tuesday will see a partly cloudy day with a chance of showers during the morning and an expected top of 26. While Wednesday will be mostly sunny with, top, with light winds and a top temperature of 31. Thursday will continue to see cloudy conditions with a late change and a top of 22. Today we saw areas of morning fog with a mostly sunny afternoon and light winds. We reached a top temperature of 25. That's a promising weather forecast expected around Geelong and the surf coast over the next six days. Thank you for joining us on News Geelong this evening. To the Regan family at Deer Park, thanks for your support and remember, Take your time and smell the flowers. From all the team at News Geelong, enjoy the rest of the evening. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend and a very good night.